Um, so welcome everyone. My name is um, Abbasifoke Pere, um, JavaScript developer. I'll, I'll be talking mostly on JavaScript practically. So what's going to happen is I'll try good. Try to you know, just try to cover most of the concepts. I don't have slides to show you, but like you know, you have to do it to understand. You have to understand why it's working, where it's working. So first of all, I would like um, everyone that is able to visit this. If you can visit replit.com, this is the site. It does R E P L I T com. I repeat that again, R E P L T dot com. Then you are, you'll be prompted to log in. So you click on the login at the right side. And once you do that, you can log in with either your account, your, your GitHub account, or your Facebook account. But I'd recommend you use GitHub. I'm, I'm believing that as of now, everyone has a GitHub account. So I'll just quickly click on that to log you in. Okay, so yeah, that's it. Uh, yeah, so I'm basically, and once you begin here, this Repolis is a tool where you can just pin up and, you know, and write code as you would wish. Uh, it's a way the, it takes away the, the idea of having set it up locally, install this, install that. So we won't do that. We'll go ahead and start the, this is what I want everyone. So you click and click on new repo. So once you come here, you can choose any language of your choice. But for the sake of what we're doing, I'll choose Node.js. I choose Node.js because Node.js is where you, you can also run JavaScript. JavaScript can also run the browser too, but I want to run it on Node.js because JavaScript is JavaScript anyway. Then you can give it a custom name. I'm just going to give it JavaScript Practicals. Let's just name that for now. And then I'm going to create a repo. Yeah, this might take some time, but before that takes time, let me just go over some stuff. So I tried as much as possible to break this down and I, I tried as much as possible. Sorry about that. I tried as much as possible to break this down into um you know topics that cover general day-to-day -day uses. I looked at what I do on a day-to-day -day basis and you know I tried to look at it from a beginner's perspective. Reflecting back to when I started, and I just want to, you know, give you a run through of what you would need. And these are the topics I could come up. With. These are the topics I came up with. It's not not all there is to JavaScript. There's a lot more to JavaScript, but with this, you can get you started. So on your previous classes, which I was able to go through, you talked on given different types, basic types in JavaScript, primitive and non-primitive types. Um, today I'm just going to do a rush rush, rush through that then. I'll introduce you to basic operations. Most of these non-primitive types exactly can, you know, they have, um, most of the primitive types you can, even the general. And we'll look at objects, array methods, and string methods. We have all kinds of data structures, JavaScript, but for the sake of this class, I'm going to keep it as simple as possible. And then we'll go into looking scope, closure, and execution context. I want to bring this in so you understand how little of these things behind the scene. And we'll look at additional statements. How would you use if else statements? How would you use switch statements? Where would you use them? We'll then look at inheritance and classes, just a little of it. And we'll look at timers, callbacks, and this error handling and network request. Not like I was going through like this sequentially. We might have to just jump to make what request and go back, but I'm just going to write code and it's going to cover all of this. So um I believe this setup. 
just give a, um, a, a wrong history of, of, let's say, of JavaScript. You know, JavaScript was invented by Bernard Ike, and it's a single-threaded language that, of course, I can work on multiple threads too, but that's, that's a story for another day. It makes use of, it makes use of an, it makes use of what we call an if loop and a call stack. Um, don't pay too much attention to the terms for now. When I start in the illustration, I'm going to go back to it. But that's about it. So what are types, basic types of JavaScript? Of course, we have numbers, we have strings, and then we have bullets. You've told that before. I'm not here to list them out. I'm just going to go on a question. What's the basic operation in JavaScript? Let's say we want to, you know, do an addition. Let's call it um add my age. Add 10 to my age. If you notice the way I name my variable. This is called camel casing. The convention in JavaScript is where you start the, the first word, as it can be added in this case with a small letter, and then the ones with the capital letter, it looks clean. It's, it's something that's peculiar to JavaScript. Languages like you know Python, they make use of what you call snake casing. So I'll, in Python, I'll do something like this. Yeah, but that starts out of the context of this class. I just wanted to bring that up so you have that in mind. So when I do add 10 to my age now, um, I'll declare first. This variable is my age. I'll make it 100 because you know I'm so old. And then we'll do, we'll do an operation. This basic operation will be this. Addition was once something. So we have we have my age here. My age is hundred. Um, I could do something like this. My age plus. Let I want I want to add hundred and hundred more years to myself. My age plus hundred. And then in JavaScript to see anything in the console, you just do con. Then I do console log. Add ten to my age. What do you think the result is going to be at this moment? Just take a careful look. We have my 800, then we had 100 to it. Of course, we should know that it should give us what? 200. That's it. That's the basic addition. Yeah, you know, it seems basic, but then when you begin to build real world, pro real world programs, you could have to do a lot of this, not just do it the way I do it. You might do it over iterations, but then we'll get to that. Then, of course, this applies for subtraction and, and multiplication. I could do minus. Just call this subtract. If I do this, what do you expect to get? Zero, of course. Um, you know, just let's just make this 110. Does it run error? No, it won't. Just like a basic math equation, is it, it, you give it two values as long as they're of that type. Once you just do, you expect a result. So once you do 100 minus 110 minus 10, that's what you get in math. You could also use multiplication here. Let's multiply it by 11. Let's say. And then we have 1,100, that's a multiplication. Let's use division. We divide, let's do by 20, what do we get? 100 divided by 20 will give you five. Yeah, we have the basic operations out the way, that's it. Wow. But then, um, that's just for primitive types, yeah? So for numbers, you can do, for numbers, that's, let's say this is specifically for numbers. For numbers, you can do this for numbers. Let me just have it here as number. Then what operations could you do? Could you possibly do on, on strings? For strings, mostly, you could do, our strings have, you know, lots of things you could do on them, but for, for the scope of this, we'll just we'll just do what, what what I like to call concatenation. So let's say someone gives you um someone gives you your first name and your last name, and decide tells you to to give to give to give out um your phone. 
how would, how would think about that? So we declare a variable. You notice I like to use cons, variables that do not change, that you don't expect to change. Primitive values that you don't expect to change. It's a good convenient them with cons. But the alternatives like var and then the alternative like net. But I'm only going to use good practice to code. So whenever you have to look at this, you know, just follow that, know that that's how it should be. But um, so now I'm just going to do what's my first name? I'll just do first name the string of Yeah. And then I'm going to do my last name, which is a query. Then let's concatenate this. How will you use my full name? Um, on a form, on a form, you know, you just if you're given a form to fill on your bank and yeah, you ask to fill your full fill your first name and your last name. You don't have to go back and say, or oh, more, I don't have a full name or, or something like that. You know, your first name plus your last name gives you your full name. So it's that is the is the same idea here. So if I should do first name plus last name, sorry. So you see, I have a highlighter. That highlighter lets me know that I'm I'm, I'm spelling the last name wrongly. So I'm just going to comment this out so it doesn't get in our, in our way. So when I do console log here, what do you expect to get for full name? I do console log here. You expect to get a specific query, yeah? Definitely, that's what you get. This is not an addition. This is what we call a concatenation. Sorry, concatenate is a concatenation, which is the summing up of two values. That's it. You know, piecing them together. But it doesn't look pretty at all. You want a space between a particular query and a query. You could go on and do something like this. Since they are just, this, are, this is still a, a string, a valid string. Keep it, put the space between those strings. So once you add them this way, um, sorry, so it's two plus sign out what happened. So once you add them this way, gives you a specific query with your space as desired. That looks good, yeah? Um, but then let me just quickly throw in a new concept for you now. We want something called template literals. I personally do not like to just concatenate like this because it gives you lots of limitations, but you have template literals. Instead of doing this, you could as well. Let me just comment this out. You know what? Let me just leave this here for now, and then I run it, and you see what's going to happen. So instead of doing that, you could do this. You have a syntax in JavaScript. You start with double quotes. Once you start with double quotes, you've created, you've created a template literal. That's it. There's no more to it. But then, Okay, what if you want to use variables? I want to use first name and last name here. How do I do it? You start with the dollar sign and then two curly braces. You see that? Then you can type your first name and you type your first name. And then in your mind, you want to give a space. You don't have to concatenate like the way we did here. You just come here and then you do this and then you come and then you do last name. It maintains that space. If I run this, what's going to happen? You know, the aim of this class is to make you see, not just, I, I, you know, I didn't want to just come and start showing you slides and all that, but also make you see how things happen in real time. The accounts cannot be changed, yeah? Once you declare it for a particular variable, if you want to declare it another time, it won't let you. Let's run and see what's going to happen. So you see what happens. Identify a full name has already been declared. This is a syntax error. JavaScript doesn't allow this. It's a way of keeping, of, you know, of keeping, keeping, um, keeping your code, not just organized, but keeping track of variables you've already used. Because if I use something like that, like let's say I use the bar. If I'd used bar and done this, Yeah, it just goes ahead and works. Bar doesn't care. It goes ahead and works. But let's use let's and see how let's is going to behave in this instance. So this is let's, right? And then we use bar. Let's see what happens. It throws an error. Let cannot be redeclared, but let can be reassigned. So um, redeclaration is when you use a keyword like this and then you name, you assign it to a name like this, then you come again and use another keyword. But if I come here on this, it would have just gone through. This is what we call a reassignment. 
your reassignments. What this is declaration. You're declaring here, you're assigning here. Let, let you get away with that. But um, anyway, just to go back to what we were doing, I'm just going to comment this out and then we have we have this running. I'm just going to comment this and then we have this running. Yeah, so we have a certificate query as, as it is. So um, we have that out way. Then, of course, um, I've mentioned, then we have booleans. Yeah, we have booleans. What operation can you perform on a boolean? So at times you, um, in real world scenarios, you want to determine a condition. So let's say you have a variable that's const, um, is true, is it to, is equals to um, one is greater than two. Or let, let's just do one is greater than two, yeah. So this, this, is a, this, this one, this automatically makes it a boolean automatically. But then, you, you know, you might just decide to say, I want to be sure this thing would, would end up being a boolean. You could do something like this. Yeah, so it gives you false. One is not greater than two, but this is a little misconstrued because even if I had done this, even if I had done it this way, even if I had gone ahead and done it this way, it would have still worked. It's, it would have worked. But then let me just let me just let me just show you some interesting conditions now. So in JavaScript, JavaScript is um you know is not type is dynamic, so it lets you get away with a lot of stuff. In some languages, you can't do this. But when I do this in JavaScript, I'm trying to. So when the point is, whenever you wrap anything with the word boolean, it automatically tries to make it true or false. It tries a way to make it true or false. So that, that now gives us a concept like true values and false values. So this means they are not actually true or false in the sense of the word true and false, but they act truthy and they act falsely. So when, when I do something like this, it tells you true. An array is truthy in JavaScript. It's a JavaScript thing. You do an object. An object is truthy. But what would you think of an empty string? It means nothing. An empty string will be falsy, right? Um, then let's look, let's look at another word like null. What do you think null will be? Null is a keyword. It's also a primitive type in JavaScript. It gives you false, yeah. And let's think of something like undefined. So null and undefined, keep that at the back of your mind. Just hold that thoughts. Null and undefined are words are also primitive types. Yeah, it gives you false. This, all these are false values. So that's it about boolean.